In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a terrain profile. This is where you first draw a transect and then calculate the elevation at every point along that transect to make a cross section that shows the elevation chain as you move through the terrain. So to start with, we're actually going to use a new extension. So we'll come up to Customize and come to Extensions here, and then turn on 3D Analyst. Close that window. And then there's a toolbar that goes along with 3D Analyst. If we right click in the toolbar space here and choose the 3D Analyst toolbar, we'll get this new toolbar that pops up and you'll see that 3D Analyst is activated because these icons here are in color. We can choose which surface we want to use in order to make our terrain profile or do any of these other operations in 3D Analyst uh, right here by selecting layer. And we want to make sure that we're not using our hill shade, but that we're using our DEM. And I'll use the projected DEM that we made uh, a little bit earlier on so that it will be projected with reference units and meters. If you use the hill shade to do any sort of terrain calculations, you won't actually be using values of elevation. You'll be using values of brightness as sun reflects off of surfaces with different slopes uh, and aspects. And so it, won't, it just won't work. You need to make sure that you're using a DEM. The simplest way of doing an elevation profile is with a straight transect that you draw across the surface. And if you come up here to this tool that's called Interpolate Line, and click that and then draw a line. So let's draw a line from west to east across the Champlain Valley here. And I'm just gonna double click to finish that line. So there's our line that we've just drawn. And what 3D Analyst will do is take every point along that line and drop it down to the DEM surface. And I'm just gonna actually turn off the hill shade so that you can see it's dropping it down to this surface where these darker values here are lower and these white lighter values up here are higher. And then it will draw, when we ask it to make a profile up with this button, create profile graph, it'll draw a profile showing us the elevation at each point along that line. So you can see it goes over a little bit of a ridge here, and that's this spot right there. And then you can go up, it's pretty flat through this area, and then we start going up into the mountains with this right here. And you can see even this little hill right there is this light area on the DEM as it crosses that and then it goes up and into the hills. And this here is a hill like that, so as the transect goes even further east of that here, it's actually going back downhill. So that's one way, and you can actually draw very complex lines. I'm just gonna hit delete with that line. I'll have to grab it, select it, and then hit delete to get rid of it. If I drew a more complex line, so let's say that I zoomed in here, and wanted to know what the elevation profile was going to be as I drove along a series of roads here, I could sort of trace with that interpolate line tool a path along these roads, and I'll double click to end it, and then come up and hit the create profile graph, and it'll use that entire line sort of straightened out with all of those elevation points dropped onto it in order to create this profile graph of that route. The other thing that we can do is use lines that are already part of a feature class, so in this case these roads for instance, in order to make one of these elevation profiles. So I'll close that graph and then make sure I'm grabbing this line that I've drawn and hit delete. And what we need to do in order to use the roads as the transect for this elevation profile is just select them. So if I come up and get the selection tool and then go ahead and start selecting, I'm going to hold shift to select multiple road segments here. So I'll get this road as it sort of goes up into the hills. Now that I've selected that, I come up and hit the create profile graph button. And it's created a profile graph. You can see here it's not particularly impressive. And the problem here is that these roads don't actually know what elevation they're at. We haven't done that part where we've interpolated, based on the DEM surface, the elevation at each point in the road. So let's do that, and then let's retry this. So I'm going to close the profile graph and deselect my lines, just so that I make sure that when I run this next tool, I'm going to be running it on all of these lines. And then we actually need to use a tool in order to do this interpolation of the elevations of the DEM onto the line work. So I'm going to open up my toolbox and come in here to the 3D Analyst tools. And under the Functional Surface tool set is a tool called Interpolate Shape. If we open that up, then we can enter an input surface. That will be our projected DEM here that we're using as our terrain surface. 
We can also input a feature class, so that'll be our mid roads separate. And then an output feature class, which will be this mid roads separate, but with elevation information about each of the vertices that make up that roads file. So I'll output that as mid roads separate underscore 3D. Save that. We can enter a Z factor here if we wanted to scale our elevation values somehow. We don't. We just want to stick with the elevation values in meters that are supplied by our DEM. We could also enter a sampling distance. So for instance, if we wanted to sample every certain distance along a roadway rather than just at each vertice that makes up the roadway, we could do that. I won't add that for this example. And then we can use different sampling methods to describe how we're going to interpolate this raster surface in order to apply elevation values to our features. So we're going to use bilinear because this is a continuous surface. We'll hit OK. That runs relatively quickly. We'll hit close. And now if I, I'm just going to turn off the original mid-road separate, so all we're looking at is the 3D one. If we come back in here, take our selection tool and then just select a few sections of this roadway. Now I can come up and hit this create profile graph button and it will actually create a profile of those sections that we'd selected. Now you see another problem which is that it's graphed each of these road segments separately rather than as a continuous single feature. The best way of really solving this problem would be to select a whole bunch of roads that are all next to each other export that selection as a separate feature class and then use the dissolve tool to dissolve them all into the same road segment before you then went and made your profile graph. For this example I'm just going to work with one of these sections so I'm going to go and deselect my line again and then select just this one longer segment make a profile graph out of it. And now I want to show you how you can take this into Illustrator and work with it as a vector graphic. So first of all let's make this graph a little bit larger just so that we're getting a, a better view of it. There aren't any options on this graph window and of course what you need to do to get more options is right click. So if I right click I can say export and I want to export this as an SVG or a scalable vector graphic file and that way if you, and any of these other options will turn this graph into pixels and then this line will be editable in Illustrator but with an SGV it'll be scalable and it'll be vector. So I've chosen that and I'm just going to hit save and that'll give us a dialog box where we can go and save it in our personal folder. So we'll call that terrain profile. Now we can close what we're working on in Arc and open up Illustrator. And now in Illustrator we can come up to File and open find our SVG file here it is open It says that clipping will be lost on round trip to tiny, and what that refers to uh, is this type of SVG which is called tiny, and it can't handle the clipping masks that Illustrator wants to impose on it. We're just going to say OK. And now here we have that graphic in Illustrator, and you can see if I open up the layers here that this line, if we zoom in and select one of these little segments, is made up of a lot of different segments rather than the same segment. If I wanted to make this into a continuous line what I would do is go and select one of those segments I'm using the direct select tool and then come up to select and say same fill and stroke so that I'm getting all these line segments that have the same fill and stroke and then I'm going to come up to edit excuse me I'm going to come and then I'm going to come up to object and path and say join and this will join all of those little segments that are butted up right next to each other into the same line. And then I could go ahead and come up to Object and Path and Simplify and simplify that so that it doesn't feel quite as jagged. And now I have a nice smooth terrain curve describing that path. I could even get rid of a lot of these other elements, probably that frame there these lines that are drawn are sort of unnecessary and I might want to even modify my scale but you can modify this however you want now that you're an illustrator.